All right then gang, so now we've covered a lot of the basics, I wanna move on to something slightly more advanced, variants. Now variants allow us to do a few good things. First of all, they allow us to extract our initial, our animate and our transition objects into a single outside object, which we can then reference. And that keeps our code cleaner, so that's the first thing. Secondly, they allow us to propagate variant changes through the DOM, resulting in cleaner code too. And thirdly, they allow us to create timing relationships between parent motions and children motions using transition orchestration properties. Now, the second two points might seem a little bit confusing for now, but I will demo those as we go forward. For now, I just wanna see how we can create variants so that we can define all of our initial animation and transition objects together in one place. And that's gonna clean up our code a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create variants for this thing right here. So up outside of the component, I'm gonna create a constant and I'm gonna call that container variance and set that equal to an object. Now inside here, I'm gonna create a hidden property and that's an object and that is basically going to be the initial state for us because really we want it hidden it's right off the page okay so i'm just going to copy this thing right here and i'm going to paste it in here that's our hidden state and by the way you don't have to call this hidden you can call it init or initial whatever you want uh, to me it just makes sense to call it hidden or initial but it's up to you i also want to make the opacity zero as well to begin with so we're adding that on because it wasn't here to begin with now i'm going to do a visible property as well and again you don't have to call this a visible you can call it what you want but essentially it's going to represent this thing right here the animate properties so let me now say i want the opacity to be one and also x to be zero okay so it's going from opacity zero to one and x 100 viewport width to zero okay so now we have those variants how do we actually apply these variants and by the way the reason i call them container variants is because this is a container div right here but you can call it what you want it doesn't have to be called this but how do we apply these variants to this div well i can delete this now and then i can say that the variants are equal to an object which is this thing right here container variance now that on its own is not going to do anything because it doesn't know that this will be our animate attribute object and this will be our initial one so we do still have to declare those so i'll say initial is equal and then this is a string and it's to whatever property we want to use so i called it hidden so i'm going to say hidden so it knows what variant to look at it looks at these variants and then it looks for the hidden property and says okay well i'm going to apply this to be my initial object and the same is going to be for animation so let me say animate and set that equal to a string and this is going to be visible because it's this object right here okay so if i save this now everything should still work the same way and it was on the base component by the way so let's go to the base component and everything still works the same way with that div. It still animates, awesome. Now, we can also add the transition to these variants and we can delete it from here. So we only apply it to the object where we want to actually apply that transition. Now we want to apply that transition to these properties right here. So I can now say in here, I'll make a transition object. And inside this transition object, we can paste these things the type and the delay. If we were animating this out as well, then we'd apply it to something else. At the minute, we're just animating this in. So we only apply it to this visible one. And now we can delete it from here. And we don't need to say transition is equal to anything because it's embedded inside this thing right here. We don't need to apply it down here because it knows to look for visible and applies that transition inside it. So if I save this, let me get rid of that empty line first of all, this should work. Let me refresh. Yep, everything still works. So already this looks a bit neater. We're now defining all of those things outside in this constant. So that's a bit better. It keeps our template a bit neater. So let's try doing a similar thing 
for this thing down here, this motion div right here. So this has a class name of next. So what I'm going to call these is the next variants. So I'm going to say const next variants is equal to an object. Now, if we take a look down here, I think it's just the X coordinate that we transition it is so let's type those up here so i'm going to use the same property names hidden and visible so hidden i'm going to set to an object and i'm going to say that the x is going to be minus 100 vw and then i'll do a visible property and inside there i'll say x is going to go to zero now i'm also going to apply the transition so it's this stuff right here. So let me copy that. And again, that's going to go inside the visible section right here. Like so, let me just say transition is going to be equal to that. Okay, cool. So now we have this next variant set up. We can copy this and apply them to that div down here. Let me come over here and say that the variance is now equal to that object. And now I'm going to get rid of this inside initial and instead this is going to be a string and this is going to be the hidden property it looks for and animate is going to be the visible property and we can get rid of transition as well because we declared it inside of the visible property right here. So again, it just neatens it up a little bit down here so it's not as code heavy. Save that and check it out and everything should still work with the animation which it does awesome so this is neatening our code a little bit but that's probably the least important thing that variants allow us to do the second thing that variants allow us to do is to propagate animation attributes down through the dom so when we have a parent element that uses variants with an animate and an initial property right here those attributes and values are going to propagate to children motion elements. Now, one of those children is the next div right here. So I can remove the initial and the animate props right there, and this will still work. Now, this element is not inheriting the parent's animation or initial properties as defined up here. It's only inheriting these two lines of code, essentially. It's looking at these and saying, okay, well, on the variants that you use down here, next variants, I'm going to automatically look for an initial state, which is called hidden, which it will find on our variants, and also an animate state called visible, which it finds. If these were called something different from the parents, then this wouldn't work. So this, in essence, just saves us a couple of lines of code. We don't have to write this down here okay in children elements so again that neatens our code so if i save this everything should still work the same way and we still get that animation right there using the hidden and the visible properties so i hope that makes sense so that's the first two benefits of using variants that we've looked at in the next video we're going to take variants a bit further and we're going to look at the relationships that it allows us to orchestrate between parent motions and children motions.